Welcome to a Jensen Games review, guys. There's a new and hottest game out on the market right now that is supposed to bring back the heart of horror games that have been lost on consoles. There are very few games that actually bring back that sense of horror to me these days. I can count all the games on one hand that are actually genuinely scary to me. That's why I was instantly fascinated with The Evil Within. Shinji Mikami, one of the founders of horror games, at least to me, promised to travel back to where horror games began, and where it needs to be now. Essentially, what made Resident Evil 4 so satisfying is now brought alongside some true horror. So does this live up to what it promised? Is it a return to horror games? Let's take a look, shall we? The Evil Within truly does so much right. I was really worried about it being too much like Resident Evil 4, and not enough of its own monster. The game is very intense and very unpredictable. Two things every horror game needs to be successful in its formula, and boy does Evil Within do it right. There are several things in this game that make it nail-bitingly scary. You will often find yourself in situations that you desperately want to get out of as soon as possible. Maybe you'll be sneaking through a village and taking out zombies while being a master of stealth. Maybe you'll be in a room with a monster that you just need to figure out how to get past. Even saving your game is its own experience. I won't spoil it for you because it's something you truly want to experience fully on your own. The game is obviously inspired by other games and films. You'll see nice little nods throughout. The game is very gritty, dirty, gory, and one of the most disturbing games I have played in recent. And that's a very good thing, folks. A very good thing indeed. All over the place you'll find dismembered limbs, noises you wish you could unhear, cockroaches by the swarm, and not enough raid to take them out. I did notice that some of the enemies were very similar to Resident Evil, and the game kind of took a lot from it. I caught myself thinking, is, is this a Resident Evil enemy? It had mansions, zombie dogs, traps, and all kinds of Resident Evil reminiscent puzzles. But it's not all bad. Resident Evil, even back in the day, was very, very well done. So if you're going to take anything from any game, I guess Resident Evil's a really good pick. You will have an upgrade system in place at your disposal. You can choose what weapons you want to upgrade and do more damage, or you can choose to run faster. The choice is up to you. The game is very challenging for sure, and upgrading your weapons and everything else will help you get through the hellish world that is put in front of you. It also borrowed some of Resident Evil's poor logic and cheesy moments. Like I remember one moment in the game where I would need this weapon for something, and I found out I had to use it on a wooden door with a metal chain on it. Now let's see, when I come to a wooden door that is locked with a metal chain, what should I cut with a chainsaw? Hmm, how about the wooden door? Wood's natural weakness is a freaking chainsaw, but the game has me cutting through the metal chain instead. What gives, game? Then I throw the chainsaw away. Don't you think that I could've used that chainsaw for something else? Oh, I don't know. A weapon against these crazy ass monsters, perhaps? The game has its moments for sure, but it comes out fairly well. The game will often make you feel like you're playing through the world's most demented and disturbing movie ever. Throughout this demented experience, you are running and hiding a lot of the time. Whether it be in a cabinet, maybe you'll be hiding in a wall or something like that, and you're just getting away from your enemy and out of the line of sight, from whatever's chasing you. The enemies match this game perfectly, often covered in barbed wire, glass spikes, and whatever else that may fuel your nightmares at night. The game is crafted with an excellent lighting that gives off such an ominous and dark tone. And the game's also riddled with jump scares that set your heart pounding for the tone of the game. Prepare for this game to give you a very high level of anxiety. Between the messed up looking enemies, to the scarce resources, to the save points that are too far in between. You're definitely going to find yourself looking for a save point too often than not. There's not going to be too many points in the game where you feel safe. The only time you're going to is when you're hiding from enemies that come around. But when they do come around, you can stealth kill them. And just because you have a weapon, that doesn't mean anything. I one time had a few bullets, a few crossbow bolts, and some shotgun shells, and I was very thankful to have them, but I still ended up just barely walking away, surviving the onslaught of enemies. 
The sound is also very important to any horror game. I think Dead Space showed us that the most. This game nails the sound design masterfully. You're gonna hear a lot of voices calling out in empty places. Cries that will help you avoid and not come into contact with something that you don't really want to meet. The sound design also plays well within the stealth. You can sneak around, but if you're too loud, all hell will break loose as those monsters will come looking for you. The graphics are also very impressive and stand out. The game impresses thoroughly with its particle effects and its dynamic lighting. It's so brilliant. You also have this warping effect that will rip you from your reality into another place. But there are some not so great things about this game. I personally do not believe that this game should have been developed on PS3 and 360. Now yeah, I hear ya. Now if you don't have one of the brand new consoles that just released, then you're probably going to be cussing me out right now, asking me why would I ever say that. Well, it's very simple guys. This game was targeted for last gen consoles. And because of that, it has a few issues that hold the game back. Facial animations are dull and fall flat. Texture pop-in can be very annoying at times. And there are some clipping issues in one of the parts of the game that I noticed really well. The texture pop-in can be some of the worst and distracting at times, pulling you slightly out of the immersive experience that the game tries to portray for you. Also, the game can become quite tedious. It's meant to be a scary experience, and it is that, as you travel around this hellish world that you're in, but once you go off and die dozens and dozens of times, the game kind of goes from being scary at heart to please just let me pass this damn part and move on. And this can be especially annoying when the game has to load every single time you die. So you will be looking at lots of load times. The early horror movies and games often had this cheesy sense of quality to it. And it's very well present within this game. The voice acting, the story, it's all just cheesy. I'm pretty sure it was intentional though for the most part. But sometimes it's just bad and I'm kind of embarrassed for it. It goes from being a really really scary experience to all hell and back to simply just becoming pure cheesiness. By the end of the game, you will have played through about 14 to 16 hours. And that really is a beefy game these days for a horror game. The game has multiple difficulties to add another layer to replayability. Ultimately though, you will encounter a few annoying things and bugs that may make a frustrating experience some of the time. But don't let that sway you from this game. This game should be experienced by anybody that loves horror games. And it should be in any true gamer's collection. It's a very fine game to have and to play. The Evil Within truly doesn't do anything that hasn't been done before, but what it does do, it does very well. To the ambience of the environments, to the gory blood and guts thrown about, it's all good and I give it a solid 9 out of 10. I recommend going out and getting this game. I had my worries and doubts about the game before its release, but it was all really really well done. So 9 out of 10 guys, go play it yourself and form your own opinions. This one's just mine. Thanks for watching though guys and happy Halloween, have a good one. And this has been a Jensen Games Review, thanks for watching.